Yesterday we told you about a scary story that had a heroic ending. An 11-year-old boy fell through the ice on Clear Lake and was rescued by none other than his good 10-year-old friend. This is what we know so far. Around 3 o'clock this afternoon, a vehicle was intercepted at this intersection on 9th Street Northwest and Washington Avenue. When we arrived on the scene, there was a woman right outside of this home sitting on the ground in handcuffs. One man is arrested in connection with the burglary of a local supermarket we told you about earlier this week. Well, you can catch this segment on KIMT.com. Just click on Finances at 5 under the Home tab. Well, Sarah, as you can see, people are just watching and waiting for some of these results to trickle in. A native North Iowan author is releasing a new book that highlights more than 16 years of eye-opening experiences. Well, we are winding down the week with a little fun here in Central Park in Mason City. It is the Friday Night Live kickoff event for their concert series. Always a good time there. Thanks so much, Annie. Well, those in attendance at the winter dance party were given a big history lesson today as well. Well, Sarah, we are on the west side of Mason City where there are a couple of winter related businesses. But check this out row after row of new shiny snowmobiles. Kind of a neat sight, but this is not where they're supposed to be at this time of year. Four-year-old Kylie Thompson is back in her mother's arms after an eventful night. Well, I was trying to find my way to this house. She was playing at a friend's home when she wandered into a nearby cornfield and got lost. Was it a little scary? Well, it was a little. Kylie's mom, Heather, says she had just checked on the kids. Not five minutes later, Sydney came in and said that she couldn't find Kylie. And we all went looking for her. And after some searching, they called police, who continued to look for the child, along with nearly 300 volunteers. And their efforts lasted hours. Everybody is tired. Um, you're upset. You're feeling um, heart, heart sunk. I mean, it's, it's such an awful feeling because you expect the worst. There's water in the area. Um, there are wild coyotes, apparently, in this field. It was tough for the search crews and even more difficult for Kylie's family. I was freaking out. I didn't know where she was. I was like, why is it taking so long for us to find her? As you can see, searching for a four-year-old in corn that's almost as tall as an adult is not an easy task. As Kylie continued wandering through the field, crews looking for her were about to be called in for the night. And then for some reason, one of the guys suggested, let's do one more push at an area that we didn't really saturate. And that was when we were successful. She was found by a volunteer, and even better, she was safe and unharmed. The nice thing about living in rural Iowa is the fact that they still care about their neighbors. It's those neighbors from near and far that have helped this family get through a scary situation. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing my daughter back to me. This year, it's all about keeping Iowa's economy moving forward with job creation and education reform. And Iowa lawmakers say they're ready to tackle those issues with the bang of a gavel and an opening ceremony. <laughs> Iowa legislators are getting to work on some top issues. The fuel tax is a big issue for me. And we'll be looking at property taxes. Mental health redesign is education. And of course, there's the budget, but Iowa lawmakers are welcoming that issue this year since they're finally dealing with a financial surplus. We got ourselves some breathing room, um, and so I think that, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit easier this time around because we have already made those hard decisions and so now it's just kind of continuing those practices. Education reform also has lawmakers talking. And I think one of the problems that no one has really talked about, it's kind of the elephant in the room, is the poverty that kids are dealing with. We have one in three children in this state that's hungry. Leaders also want to take a look at community colleges and attracting more skilled workers in the state. We, we definitely need to improve our excellence in education for the workers to be workers of Iowa and for the businesses that are in Iowa. And after years of debating property tax reform in this building, lawmakers say now is the time to get something done. We actually have uh, figured out a little bit what the goals are, what this, uh, you know, possible solutions, possible barriers. So we know those things. We can focus more clearly on common ground. 
Another issue they're looking to tackle is the state's role in mental health care. But we certainly have to make sure that we're, we're able to provide resources for people that uh, are troubled. Lawmakers I talk with say they are willing to reach across party lines and work together to get things done. In Des Moines, Natalie Tendall, KIMT News 3. Judge Colleen Whelan first denied the request for a new trial. Farnsworth's attorney filed that motion last week. Then she handed down a 50-year prison sentence for Farnsworth, but it's the victim impact statements from Decker's parents that are leaving a lasting impression. It's been 11 months of hell. Nearly a year after Ian Decker was stabbed to death, the man convicted of his second-degree murder is learning his fate. Mr. Farnsworth, this is a final judgment and sentence. But it's also the day the parents of Decker are taking an opportunity to say something to the man who took their son's life. He was a helper. He was a protector. He wasn't violent. He had no right to carry that knife to that fight. His mom told Farnsworth he will have to live with his choices and explained how hard it is to lose a child. Uh, there's nothing that will ever change the heartache that I feel. I have three kids, Ian Tyler Sherry. It's just the way you say it, Ian Tyler Sherry. I always have three kids. But Decker's father had a more direct message. I feel hatred. Nothing but hatred. Even now my heart's beating so fast, so hard, because I just he told Farnsworth how upset he was with the lack of remorse shown during the trial and how much of an impact this murder has on his family. I love my son. I had so many plans. And he stole that from me. He stole that from us. He also mentioned Ian's two year old daughter and what his death means for her. But a kid lose their parent at that age, all the things she's going to miss out on. All the father daughter moments. After sitting quietly listening to those statements, Farnsworth appeared visibly upset when it was his turn to address the court, saying he is sorry for what he did and that he never meant for any of it to happen. I'm really reacting to a bad situation in family. I mean, it works. But for this father, it's of no comfort now. You killed my son, and I wish the worst on you. Farnsworth must serve at least 35 years of his 50-year sentence behind bars before he's eligible for parole. That means he'll be in his late 50s before there's a chance of his release. Sarah? One man is arrested in connection with the burglary of a local supermarket we told you about earlier this week. 52-year-old Leroy White of Mason City was arrested today in connection to the crime. On December 30th, Saragota County Sheriff's deputies responded to a burglar alarm call at Dugan's Supermarket in Rockwell. The store owner tells us tobacco, alcohol, and loose change were all stolen. With his help, White was arrested, but they still suspect one more person had a hand in it. White is being charged with burglary in the third degree and possession of burglarous tools. He's being held in the Saragota County Jail on a $5,000 cash bond. No, it doesn't. Like last night was the coldest I think I felt all season long. <laughs> just, and then that, you know, just a couple days ago we had temperatures below zero again too. So it's just been an you know, everlasting thing. I know, it's crazy. Well, this blast of Arctic air has people shivering throughout much of the country actually. <laughs> some folks in southern Minnesota are getting a taste of some coast to coast dining favorites. Six chefs served up their most famous dishes at the Hormel Historic Home for the second annual Foodie Throwdown. During the event, people get a first-hand taste of cooking delights from the deep south to the Hawaiian Islands. The executive director of the event says it's nice to see people come out for a good cause. All the proceeds raised from the event will be given to the Hormel Historic Home. KIMT, along with our Giving Your Best partners, First Citizens National Bank and Diamond Joe Casino, put on the annual Family Fair this afternoon. It's an event designed with kids in mind, where nonprofits and local businesses provide an activity, craft, or game at their booth, all to get their name out while promoting some family fun. All proceeds from the fair go directly back into the community. Well, the fair also provided the perfect setting for a certain type of dog to get some needed training. Whistle is a German Shepherd puppy, and he is being trained to be a guide dog for the blind. Hava Hagenbarth from Mason City takes in these dogs and teaches them basic obedience before they're sent off for some final schooling. She brings her dogs to events like these so they get used to being around a lot of people. Hava says these dogs are a great asset to those who are blind because they help provide independence.